Hello subscribers, welcome to another subscription video where we this time will take you to Kenya, my favorite country. And uh, today with me I have Kian, bar manager in our busy shop in Torhelen and also my travel buddy from uh, the last trip down to Kenya. The coffee we're sending for you this time is the same across the bags, or the same green coffee at least, we'll get back to that. It is from a place called Ki in the Kiriniaga region of Kenya. This is a cooperative with about 850 members, active members, which means farmers who grow their own trees, pick cherries and then deliver them to this coffee factory called Ki. What, what was your impression of uh, visiting a place like uh, Ki for the first time? First of all, it was quite hectic. There was a lot of activity going on there, which was really cool. But also, what I think what stood out to me most was the hard work. You always bring a coffee and you think, all right, there were some farmers and it was hard work. But when actually seeing it, it was really impressive. It was really hard work. People carrying like these huge bag up to 60 kilos on their back. Not just one, it just went back and from uh, in the wet mill. And that was very, very impressive. Also very humbling when you're brewing these at home. Think about every gram you use. Yeah, to see how much labor actually goes into producing a coffee like this. We came on a really good time of year as well. It was in November last year, right at the peak of the harvest. And we were there on a picking day. So they harvest about three days of the week, where then farmers will come and deliver it to the, to the washing station, which is called a factory, the wet mill here in, uh, in Kenya. And Ki is, uh, is together with uh, Ki and Goy and Karimikui, uh, part of what is called Rungeto Society. So you might, if you've met this coffee somewhere before, you might have seen it labeled as Rungeto as well, but to be more precise, this is not from the Rungeto Society, it's from the actual key factory. And this is one particular outturn. So one harvest from several picking days assorted by the mill manager at Key um, that we have selected to bring to you. So on this trip, we went to visit both Key but also Kiengoy, and we actually saw different parts of that whole society. It clearly stood out as a super well-managed society. And I think you could tell already from arriving, and I think I mentioned this to you down there, like the amount of metal drying tables there is unlike any other factory I think I've visited, which the metal drying tables on its own will improve quality to some bit because the wooden ones tend to start to fall over over time and start to like semi-collapse over time. That means that that chicken wire that's spread out between the, the, the poles will start to slant and then you'll get like a very thick layer of coffee in the middle that takes longer to dry. With the metal ones, you can have it more evenly. It requires less maintenance over a year and that when the layer is more even, you get more even drying. So it has a quality effect, but what it tells me is that they have been getting good money and they have invested it back into their own production method when I see this many drying tables. What else stood out for you when, when we walked around there? Was there any, anything you picked up on? One of the things that I picked up was the general vibe from, from, from all the farmers. Um, even though it, it is really hard work, there was no like sad, sad smileys anywhere. It was really, uh, everybody was super happy. Everybody had like a, a lot of, you say like fighting spirit, had a lot of energy. The reason the factory is called Key is actually from the river Key that runs right below the, the factory. This region of Kiriniaga is uh, right on the eastern side of Kiriniaga, close to the border to Embu region, which is uh, to the east of it. And you're, we're literally like viewing Mount Kenya right in the background from the factories. You can see Mount Kenya there in all its majestic glory. And it's the melting water from Mount Kenya when the snow melts that runs into the river Key. And this is the water that they use for processing. So the good thing here is that they have heaps of clean water that they can take and process. And they will, of course, clean this water before letting it back into nature again. We should taste some of this delicious coffee before we yes. uh, talk too much. Mm, that's delicious. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, what stands out for me is definitely the, the vibrant acidity. I mean, the acidity is, is so vibrant, it, it's really mouth-watering. Yeah. It kind of helps us to taste better. Um, but not going into that citric acidity, it's still very sweet, still very berry-like. 
it's really it's really good. <laughs> so a cover like this is, I think, like easy in some ways to brew as a filter. You you have to dial it in, but you'll get like lots of uh, aroma, lots of acidity, and everything out. But brewing it as espresso can be challenging because you want to balance that acidity. You don't want it to become sour. You want to get out enough sweetness so that you have this like lively acidity balance with a decent amount of natural sweetness. And you're, you know, you're a previous <laughs> Danish barista champion. So yes. how would you approach dialing this in for espresso? I mean, with, with Kenyan coffees, I tend to, to really open it up a bit more. I would say don't be afraid to, to go acidic. You expect this to be an acidic coffee. So I would always take a little bit more out. If you're doing 19 grams in or you're doing normally 38 grams out, I would definitely, I wouldn't be scared to go 40, 42 grams out. And also quite fast, maybe 25 seconds, 26, 27 seconds. There is a lot of room here to make this taste amazing. Um, you can play a lot with this. It can also make it a bit more like intense espresso which is also gonna taste uh, really, really great. It's gonna be a little bit more berry-like. It has a little bit more mouthfeel. Whereas if you open it up, it's gonna have like a lot of acidity, which is something I really enjoy. Yeah, be prepared for that level of acidity, but then have fun with it. I think it has so much sweetness that it's, it should be balanced as an espresso still. So enjoy it. For sure. Thanks, Kian. Now we'll get the Casper to join us for a little bit of insights into the two different bags of these coffees that you're getting. Yes. All right, so now we already talked a little bit about key. You know what you're getting, but you're getting two different versions of the key because this is something we've been wanting to do for quite a while. Mm -hmm. um, we have done it once before, I think, yes. but it's a while ago and it's to dive into the effect of roasting and the, how do you say, like the consequences of different roast profiles. So if you've heard us talk about our roastery before, you've probably heard that you know, each and every bean we buy gets its own roast profile. And what that means is the application of heat throughout the whole roast cycle, you can say. Uh, so not just how dark or light you roast, but the actual temperature curve of the beans throughout the roast, which has a huge impact on the flavor in the end. Hmm. And this is basically Casper's main job in the company. Lucky is to dial in these roast profiles, to taste the coffees every single day, every single batch, score it, go back and, yeah, do you want to elaborate on that process or shall I? <laughs> Keep going, Klaus. Keep going. Uh, that is exactly what I do. Uh, and one of the coffees that we always tend to go back to when we are to check uh, profiling, mm -hmm. or like go deep into what is actually happening throughout the roast, is Kenyan coffees because Kenyan coffees are so aromatic. Whereas uh, if you roast a Colombian coffee, some of the aromas are more subtle. Mm -hmm. uh, a Kenyan coffee just really showcases whenever you do small differences. Yeah, and that's what we've been doing here with these four different roasts of the same coffee. Two of them, it's meant for filter. Yeah. Two for espresso. Should we start with the filter? I think so. That'd yeah. be fun. Uh, yeah. So now we have one of the one of the filter roasts here in the cup. Yeah. It's a bit. It's a bit fresh. It's just roasted like an hour ago or two, so so straight it, out of the roaster. It has a bit of like gassy things, but you can definitely tell there's a lot of aroma. Yeah. So this one is the the faster profile. Yeah. So, so the two different profiles here, we're aiming to hit the same end color. That means that on our Actron reader, we should have somewhat similar rose color. And the uh, Actron reader is this scientific device that you grind your roasted coffee and put it into this disc and slide it in and it reads out a number and I think it's it's measuring like protein chains or something in, in yeah, that. something, something. Something, something. <laughs> but it gives a very exact reading of your end roast color. Yeah. Here we have the same end color, but two different profiles. For me, there's many different ways that you can, you can roast the coffee to make it really, really delicious. It's, it's always just a matter of your taste preference. So what is it that you want to really highlight in a coffee like this? For me, the key has like insanely beautiful Kenyan aromas that yeah. like everything that you expect for a Kenyan to have. But the thing is Kenyan coffees, if you roast them a bit faster, you tend to get a bit more citrus notes, at least in the Kirinyaga region. Yeah. If you roast them a bit slower, you get more like maybe rhubarb or more dark berries. 
And I feel that's super fun, that even with the same end color, we can actually work with the, the balance, how you experience the, the aromas in the coffee. So there is definitely room to work with, with the coffee. It's not just, this is a green coffee. It can taste like this only. There's, there's many different things we can do. And I think it's an interesting way to show, like we're not talking a light and dark roast here. We're talking exactly the same end roast color, but the effect of just the roast profile. And mm. that at the end of the day, when we talk about this with other roasteries as well, is there's no right and wrong. It, at the end of the day, it's a matter of preference. What do you want to showcase in that coffee? Which I think is an important thing to highlight the, the role of the roasters as well and the decisions that you make in manipulating or however you want to call it, yeah. this coffee to bring out what you think is the best representation of it. And also the whole talk about light versus medium versus dark roast. I mean, yeah. these are both similar, yeah. so, but, but they, they're going to taste different. Yeah, brilliant. So that was on the filter. And did mm -hmm. you do exactly the same for espresso? Or on the espresso, uh, yeah. I wanted to do one of them a bit more classic. So one of them is somewhat near to our normal Keeny double A espresso roast. Yeah. And then the other one is somewhat near to our Halo espresso roast. Ah, the Halo okay. espresso From roast Ethiopia. is quite light, yes, yeah. Ethiopian coffee. Yeah. There we really want to highlight the acidity and like the citrusy notes. And we just roast them away if we go just a little bit dark on it. And I think some of the same things go for Kenyan coffees. There's like the more citrusy note, they tend to disappear and you get more focus on the berry notes. But here we want to try and highlight that that is actually also there in the Kenyan coffees. What, what is the big difference? Is the temperature like is low in the beginning or do you flatten it out towards the end or what, what's the main? It's a bit of everything. So flattening it out, dragging it out in the end so that we actually kill a little bit of the acidity. Mm. Uh, whereas the other one is just going pretty fast. So the one has like a filter end, but a slower way to get there. So, yeah. so it it rests for longer in the roaster, you could say. So before we start to apply a lot of heat, we yeah. rest it for a bit longer and that generates more uh, sweetness in the cup. Uh, so you get a bit more body uh, yeah. for the espresso. So one of them should be very, very light, very like sharp and just super fruity. The other one should be a bit more uh, sweet, a bit more full bodied and just different aromas, a bit more berry notes compared to the other one that's more citrus. If there's any way for you guys to leave uh, comments about it, please do so because this is highly interesting for us as well. Yes. I mean, we roast the way that we believe is the best, but uh, it's always nice to hear other people's thoughts. Yes, please put in the comments below which did you like the most? Was it the fast one, the super citric acidic one, or was it the slow one, the one that's like slightly more uh, fruit tone, rhubarb maybe even uh, developed in this? Yep. We really hope you like it. Let us know what you think and we'll see you next time for two new exciting coffees. Thanks.